Hey, what's up everyone? TJ here. We're down in New Zealand and it's the end of a long season chasing winter. And in this video, I wanted to talk about all the gear that I used this season and share some feedback on what I thought about it as well. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna run through all of the main gear that I used. And the first thing I wanna talk about is my helmet. I recommend everyone wears a helmet every time you snowboard. I've been running the Sandbox Classic 2.0 for about 10 years now. And dropping later this fall is actually gonna be a Sandbox Board Archive signature helmet. So super stoked to share that with you guys. That's the helmet I used all last year. It's like a simple low profile brimmed helmet. It's got some venting that starts in the front and kind of allows some airflow going through the top of the helmet. It's going to feature a BOA tightening system in the back with a liner and it's going to feature a black and gray variation of the Great Wave off Kanagawa. Went for a Japanese themed design for the signature model and I'm super stoked on how it turned out. I can't wait to share that with you guys. I'll update the link in the description once that's available. For goggles this year, I'm running the A&M and m 4 It's my second year running this goggle here. Uh, just super stoked on the aesthetic of it. It's a larger fitting frame, which is my personal preference, and just really stoked on the overall quality of these as well. Everything from the lens quality, uh, the venting, the foam, uh, just a really solid, goggle from Anon and my favorite feature is definitely the magnetic lens here. Super easy to swap lenses or you know if you need to take your goggles off to look at a camera screen or a phone or something like that uh, makes that super easy and I haven't had any like fogging issues with these. I find the contrast is really good uh, with the snow as well with the perceived lenses so uh, definitely a go-to for me and have been stoked on the A and M4s this year. I also wear a face mask full time year round regardless of the temperature or conditions and this past season I tried out air hole face masks for the first time and actually really enjoyed it. If you're unfamiliar, air hole makes a wide variety of like neck tube masks and balaclavas that all have an air hole right uh, located right in front of your mouth there. So you have venting, you can tuck the mask up into your goggles to protect your nose and you're not going to get that goggle fog. I've been running the uh, waffle grid variation of their balaclava that's been my go-to and i've been stoked on it so if you're looking to try something different or you don't have a face mask you check that one out i've had a great experience so far and i think i'm probably going to run it again this upcoming season i also want to talk about the layers that i've been wearing out there and i made the switch over to full merino wool base layers and it has been an absolute game changer i'd highly recommend it if you're looking for a quality upgrade it's just going to make things way more comfortable out there and the two main benefits you're going to get with merino is that it still retains its like insulating properties even after you sweat and it gets a little bit wet unlike uh, like a cotton material would and it's naturally odor resistant. So if you're on a trip and you can't do laundry every day or every other day, you can wear it a few days in a row and it's not gonna get all smelly. Um, I'm personally running the Evo brand base layers. They were just the best deal I could find at the time I was shopping, but I uh, would highly recommend Merino base layers. Really anything that touches the skin, uh, I'd recommend Merino wool. Uh, so going right along with that, I did pick up some Merino socks this year, just a bunch of Merino stance socks. I got a bunch for about 15 bucks. So just because it is that higher quality fabric doesn't mean it has to break the bank. Um, again, you know, you get those benefits. It's moisture wicking and, you know, snowboard specific socks are going to be articulated. They're going to have insulation and maybe even a little bit of padding in places where you need it specifically for snowboarding. So I'd recommend taking a look at that as well if you're on the market for some new layers. And the last piece of layering I wanna bring up is one of my personal favorites, the mid layer. Can't recommend it enough. It's super underrated. Uh, I wear the Arcteryx Atom LT. If you've watched previous Gearlist videos, I'm still wearing the same one. I think this is my sixth season with this. So it's been an amazing investment and some of the benefits, you know, it's uh, very packable, super easy to just throw in your backpack. Uh, very versatile if you're using it, you know, under a hoodie, under a jacket, you can use it around town as an outside layer as 
as well. I would recommend picking up a mid layer that doesn't have a hood, so you're not like stacking hoods as you're layering up. And one last thing I really like about the Atom LT specifically is it has venting on the sides that I think makes it a little bit more versatile for heat management. So uh, yeah, definitely looking at picking up a base layer. It is one of my favorite things that I've ever purchased. I think everybody should have one if you're spending a lot of time on the mountain. It comes in handy so often. And like I just mentioned, I run that mid layer under hoodies and jackets, and I wanna highlight this hoodie as well. So I've been making full custom board archive hoodies over the last couple years. I'm super stoked on how these are getting dialed in. Uh, snowboard specific, riding fit, I got to choose all the details on these hoodies, everything from the fabric to the cut, the length, all the features. Uh, this is the standard black riding hoodie. You're gonna get mesh vents under the arms, YKK zippers with zipper pulls, zippered hoodie pocket, uh, liner on the inside, and a media hole in the inside pocket as well. So just trying to give the most quality that I can with this product. And we're gonna be expanding to offer a white colorway next season as well. And I'm gonna be adding a 10K waterproof variation uh, also. So if you're interested in picking up a riding hoodie or you're stoked on the way these have been looking in the videos, please make sure to check these out. They'll be linked down in the description below as well as all of this gear. So if you uh, wanna help support the channel, one of the best ways to do that for free if you're shopping online is just click one of those links and I'll get a small kickback. So I really appreciate that. Next, I want to talk about the outerwear that I've been wearing. So this last season, I ran the 686 Dispatch bib. It's a stretch Gore-Tex bib. Uh, I've been super stoked on it. I mean, the main reason I went for it was just the color, the style, and the fit. That was the most important to me. But uh, the fact that it's stretch Gore-Tex, so it adds that comfort, that maneuverability, and you still get that Gore-Tex waterproofing has been awesome. Uh, stoked on like the two-tone like knee patch I got on these and it's just a well thought out bib. I think it's got a well thought out placement and functionality of all the zippers. You've got uh, vents on the inside of the thigh, vents on the outside of the leg if you're doing more backcountry touring for more airflow. It's bow compatible on the leg gaiters and the fit's dope so I've been stoked on these bibs. I also ran a 686 jacket this year, the Hydrostash Sync. Uh, again, just picked it because of the style. I'm super stoked on the kind of like tie-dye watercolor style pattern I found on it, the white and gray colorway. And it is a Gore-Tex jacket, so you get that high quality top tier waterproofing. Uh, the only real downside I found is that it's not stretched. That would just be like the most ideal, but got all the good features you'd expect. Zippers on the underarms, merino wool around the collar and like in front of your mouth there for some extra warmth. It's got fully taped seams on the inside to just bulletproof that waterproofing. Uh, two vents on the front without mesh. I think that's worth noting. So it's just full on airflow through the front there on both sides. It's got your standard powder skirt that you can button up to help keep snow out on those powder days and wrist gaiters as well. For gloves, I ran the Oyuki Tamashi Mitten again. This is my fourth season wearing these mittens in one colorway or another, and my second full season on this specific mitten. Uh, just super stoked on Oyuki coming out of Niseko, Japan, the whole brand story there, and it's just a real high quality mitt. So uh, full leather, Gore-Tex, comes with the uh, little wrist straps. So you're not losing your glove on the chairlift if you take it off. And yeah, just super stoked to be repping Oyuki and uh, I've had nothing but good experiences with it. So if you're looking for a quality mitten, check out the Oyuki Tamashi Mitt. All right, so one last thing before we get into the hard goods, let's talk about boots. So again, this is a product that I've been wearing for multiple seasons. This is my fourth pair of the Ride Fuse boot. They just work really well for me. I'm super stoked on all the features you'll find in them and the fit and the stiffness just work really well for me as well. I like something a little bit stiffer because I've had some ankle injuries over the years. So this is gonna be a bit of a stiffer freestyle boot. And some of my favorite features you're gonna find is the full urethane tongue and spine. So you get a little bit of rebound out of these boots and I think can help uh, give it a little bit more life as well. You know, if you're riding like 60, 70 or more days a season, 
I think I have 120 plus on these this year and they're still holding up all right, but uh, I think they're ready for a refresh for next season. Um, they're standard lace, so you get full control over the fit. Plus you get a boa dial on the side uh, for their tongue tied system that kind of pulls that tongue towards your shin and just gives it a, a more snug fit. Again, just giving you more control over it. Full wrap intuition liner, very comfortable, full rubberized toe cap to just add more durability and waterproofing and a Michelin outsole. So um, personally, I've been really stoked on these. They work super well for me. My foot measures to a nine and a half and I can actually run these in an eight and a half. So getting that smaller profile is a nice bonus as well. Okay, let's get into the hard goods. I know a lot of you guys are probably waiting to hear about the snowboards the most. So let's get right into it. Uh, for bindings, I've been running the Union Ultra, my second full season on these, and I've been super stoked on them. Uh, like I mentioned, I've had some ankle issues over the years. So uh, the main thing I wanna highlight with these and why I like them so much is the dampening and the cushion as well as the comfort you're gonna find in these bindings. Uh, so the main feature I wanna highlight is their molecular bushing with TPE outsole, is what they call it. Uh, basically, just a super damp footbed in this thing. Uh, the plastic in the binding doesn't go all the way along the footbed. So there's a big section of the toe. The majority of the toe of the binding is that full molecular bushing as well as the full heel. So you get a lot of dampening. You're not going to be feeling a lot of micro vibrations in these and they add a lot of cushion for those harder hits. And if you have ankle issues, this is going to be my top recommendation binding wise. I really enjoyed them. Uh, if you want all the details, there's gonna be another video on the channel taking a deeper dive into these, but uh, that's the biggest thing I wanted to highlight here today. And I also wanna quickly mention their Astro washer. So basically they added a locking washer on these with notches. So there's no heel cup slippage on these as well if that's a hesitation for you with union bindings. Okay, and saving the best for last, let's get into the snowboards. There's been two main boards I rode this season as my personal boards. Uh, my main daily has been the Evil Twin Plus right here beside me. You know, for years now, I've either been on the Evil Twin, the Boss, or now the Evil Twin Plus. It's gonna be full positive camber. It runs Battalion's triple base technology. It's really light and just like a mid flexing, versatile park board. I think the biggest highlights for me is that combination of the camber and the 3BT. So you get that precision, the energy that you need for just all around park riding while still being very catch free, um, as well as how light it is. The Evil Twin Plus is gonna be noticeably lighter uh, than some other boards of that construction. And the last board has been my more all mountain board or the one I've been taking out when I don't really know what the conditions are gonna be like or I just wanna do like some general resort exploring. And that has been the Season Nexus. Uh, I've talked about this one in the past. There is a comprehensive review on the channel if you want all the details. Uh, but basically, it's got a pretty simple but versatile construction. It's got a little bit of a directionality to it. So it's gonna offer some float on those deeper days if you happen to take it out on a pow day. Uh, but my favorite thing about it is the combination of the flex with the directional design. Uh, in my opinion, it's got a very kind of more park freestyle kind of flex to it. It's really fun in the park or doing freestyle kind of riding around the resort, hitting side hits, rollers, looking for natural features, all that kind of stuff. Uh, fun for carving as well, uh, but it's gonna give you that versatility when you're exploring the resort and uh, softer snow conditions as well. So if you're looking for something all mountain that's slightly directional, but has uh, more manageable flex, nothing too aggressive, uh, the Nexus is a great one to check out. So that's been a go-to for me this year as well. All right, guys, that is my full gear list. Everything I use for the 22-23 season. If you got any questions, drop it down in the comments. Or if you want to read about any of this gear on your own, that's all going to be linked down in the description. So please make sure to go check that out. Drop a like if you got some value and subscribe for my updated gear list on all the new gear I'm going to be running for the 23-24 season dropping in November. I appreciate all you guys and I'll see you in a new one next time. Oh, <laughs>